So that's against the rules, and you can't sit with us. Whatever. Those rules aren't real. Good day, mama. Seem to think you step out. Get some in now. Welcome back to another Girl Code Media podcast. I am here on a couch with my girl, Adi. Hey, babe. Hey. So, Adi was on a My Girl Code panel in Cincinnati. That was such a good time. That was so good. And she's back in Columbus. So, I had to get her back on the couch. So, real quick, can you introduce yourself to our audience? Yeah, so my name is Autumn. I am a social worker. Um, yeah. That's... She's that girl. <laughs> she's, she's playing around. Um, she does, like, a lot of content um, about mental health, so definitely follow her. I'm going to link everything in my bio. But as far as the titles, what is your Girl Code profile? Like, who are you? I would say that I'm, like... Laid, a laid back mm-hmm. nerd. Really? I love you to read. Nerd? I love to read. <laughs> <laughs> like I love to read. I love history. Like I'm really like an archive girl. Like let's say Ooh. like you're like driving down the street and you see like something closed down. I want to know why. I want to know what used to be there. Like I'm just really into all of that stuff. That's that's me. And it's just like why? That's me. <laughs> like I'm interested in all the untold stories mm-hmm. and mysteries of the world like even when i'm like people watching i always wonder like what's their story me too and <laughs> i stay on like the library's website looking at old buildings reading oh, that's cool. reading the background and stuff it's just like girl wow. i find myself down like rabbit holes just reading history that is beautiful i didn't know that about you yeah. that's cool <laughs> Okay, you have to uh, tell me how to get on the library's website and look into stuff like that. Because I've been wanting, I've been reading books more, but um, I don't know nothing about politics mm-hmm. and a lot of history. So I don't know where to start with that. So I'm going to get with you. Cause I started with like black history and then that was all it just, I did. you know, then it just <laughs> expands. Like there's so many historical buildings mm-hmm. and I just want to know like what made this historical? Like why? That sounds like another content idea for you. <laughs> like, to have that information on your TikTok. And it's, okay. I never really thought about it. Yeah, if you have all that knowledge, you need to share it. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I was about to get into it. But today's girl code that we're going to be talking about is the friendship rule 36. And that reads, if it is possible... Follow peace with everyone. And it's actually biblical. So, one, do you believe in that rule? Do you think that's um, a rule that you would follow? Yes, no, and why? I do think that it is a rule that I have followed my whole life. Mm -hmm. Um, I've never really had, like, a falling out with Mm -hmm. any of my close friends. You know, I've seen a lot of people say that, friendship breakups are harder than romantic breakups Mm -hmm. and I understand where they're coming from but I've never experienced that so I'm just like oh wow girl you're lucky I know but I mean I have went my separate ways when it comes to friendships but nothing has ever ended like on bad terms and I don't think that I've ever lost a friend worth keeping so it wasn't like oh I'm about to go sit in the corner and cry Mm -hmm. because it wasn't like that whereas Mm -hmm romance i'm boohooing you know yeah, so it's, yeah. it's different to so me. your friendships pretty much when y'all did have to um separate or that decision was made they were still basically respectful of it like mm-hmm. it was a mature conversation yeah that's why she's on here y'all because that is <laughs> not everybody's reality <laughs> so can you share with us a time that you had to um follow that rule or when that rule was applied It doesn't have to be friendships, but if you could um, talk about that. um, Yeah, let's stick to friendships. Let's stick Mm -hmm. to friendships, and then you could share another experience that you had to apply that rule to. Yeah, so I would say um, I've had, as I just, like, grow and elevate, Mm -hmm. sometimes you realize you're not in the same space with people that you used to be in. Um, That's hard. Like, that term when people say, like, you shouldn't be the most, successful or the most um intelligent the most whatever in your circle and so, to surround yourself about surround yourself by people that you want to be like mm. like 
That's really true. It and is. it's even if you Oof. you don't have to cut your friends off to do that. Mm -hmm. But it's like as you slowly gravitate towards the people that you admire, things just slowly start to fall off. And mm -hmm. I think that I'm grateful that things for me have always been that way. So it's never been like, hey, I don't want to be your friend anymore. It's just been where maybe we're not hanging out as much. We're not talking as much. So then it's like, you know, I just feel like we don't see eye to eye. Wow. And I feel like every conversation that I've had has gone that way. I don't think our values and our morals align anymore. Like, we can still be friends. We mm -hmm. can be cool, but... We're not as close. Mm -hmm. I experienced that a lot. I think, um, like how you said, you always want to know things. I mean, at the end of the day, we're expanding our knowledge. And I feel like, for me, in my situations, I've always seemed to outgrow my circles mm -hmm. and it seems like I'm always kind of like not fishing for new friends but I just outgrow my circles and I'm just letting you know God just bring whoever to me at a certain seasons of my life which is biblical too there are going to be people um, in your life for a reason for a season so you know I, I'm used to moving that way I always try to keep love in my heart for um, everybody I definitely try to um, be open and honest but it still hurts. It does. It's almost like, um, like in the beginning when I was like, I think a freshman, like in college, when I was starting to grow a little bit more, had different ideas than what was presented to me in my environment. I started to grow more than the people in my environment. And they were always going, oh, I didn't want to go out. Like I wanted to learn more. I wanted to be more. And I still love them. I wanted to take them with me. But at the end of the day, they're not interested. They're simply not interested. And you know, you could kind of sometimes not become small to stay in your comfortable environment, but kind of. Like, you want people around you so bad, or you want your friends, or you really value that friendship that you want to keep being the same so it doesn't, like, end. Mm -hmm. But that's not healthy for you, and eventually it does still break up, you know? So that has been my journey. Um and it's, it's hard. It's definitely hard to outgrow friends and move on for me. I'm not sure if it's for you. Well, but. I've never, like, really been a part of, like, a clique. Like, even in high mm -hmm. school, like, I've always been, I don't, I hate the term, but, like, popular. Mm -hmm. Like, everyone's always known me. But I will always be, like, I'm cool with them. I'm cool with them. I'm cool with them. And everyone mm -hmm. always says, like, you have so many friends. But, like, mm -hmm. I don't have, like, a circle. Yeah, I'm not yeah. a part of, like, a group chat. Mm -hmm. Like, I, you know how... Um, you'll see memes like, oh, I'm going to send this to the group chat. I don't have that. That is and so it does funny. <laughs> I just got my group chat, but last year for the first time, like, yeah, I I know exactly what and you mean. And it gets lonely sometimes, but I yeah. feel like that's how I maintain, like, my peace and my sanity because I have different friends for different things. If I mm -hmm. want to go out and that's the type of time I want to be on, I have friends for that. Mm -hmm. If I want to go to the library mm -hmm. I have friends for that I have friends for different things and I know who to go to for what and that's how I maintain my friendships that is so good because that was my story for so long and I'm like let me try both to where I'm still cool with everybody but I have like my three that I could call something mm -hmm. bad go down so um, I always tell that story in the same exact way I never did clicks in high school so I was popular because I knew everybody that's what popularity mm -hmm. mean it doesn't mean bully your way to the top it doesn't mean uh, you know manipulating power none of that it's about who you know so I never agreed with clicks in, in general mm -hmm. so I felt at a point in time like in my 20s that like I wanted to actually be a part of a community and girl it was so drama filled like, it was so many girls in the group. Everybody had egos, feelings, emotions, and projecting. Um, it, it's just, it was a lot. And I'm like, okay, this is why I didn't do it in the first place. And half of the time, it's not even about me. It just, mm -hmm. I'm observant. And I'm like, okay, well, if you could talk about her while I'm sitting here, you could talk about me. Like, you know, I just really dug deep into, like, those clicks and what they mean and how possessive they could be, actually, mm -hmm. too. And I'm like, okay. I'm cool. Let me um, go back to kind of just being friends with everybody, keeping people at surface level. And then this, um, well, actually last year, um, I bought some of my friends together and we just, you know, just started becoming, oh, you know, close. And, you know, that was like, that's my core group. Um, but it's still just, girl, girl. Outgrowing people are just never easy. And it, it could be scary sometimes because, again, you want people to go with you. 
and I realized even with my situation um, not being in a clique I don't want to be too surface level with people either because so you, you want to be yourself that? yeah mm-hmm. like there's times where I'm talking to people who like we're still friends but we may not talk as often and I'm just like wow they really just don't get it mm-hmm so you have to keep things at a minimum to where you're not over explaining yourself or going into all these details where you're not only just wasting your time but like knowing that they just don't understand and it's like that's okay i'm not belittling you for that or judging Mm -hmm. you but we just don't our our way of thinking isn't aligned yeah that's huge so what would you say is like a good reason or a few reasons why somebody should walk away from a friendship because there is a term called grace and sometimes it's needed sometimes you give a little too much of it so what are some things that you could think of um that are just like okay yeah you should like what are your non-negotiables so this is the first thing that comes to my mind but i am not the friend to call when you want to go slash someone's tires (laughs) you (laughs) If you want to go, I just had this conversation. Is this crazy? If you want to go looking to see why someone isn't uh, calling mm. you back, isn't texting you back, if you're concerned for their well being and you want to make sure they're alive, okay, we're going to go knock on the door, but mm-hmm. that's it. I'm not doing anything yeah. else. I'm not driving, but I'm not the friend for that. And the fact that, you know, that's something that you even consider doing, like property damage, that's, I'm not your girl. Mm-hmm. And, I don't know why that came to my mind because it's so random, but it's just, I just think it's so low. Yeah. Um, And I don't like hurting people. Like that's, you know, that's property damage. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. I think regardless of like your feelings, it says a lot about how low you're willing to go. Mm -hmm. And that's something that I can't get with. Because it's, I'm not going to say it was cute when we were younger, but at our big age. I know. (laughs) Like, like you said what (laughs) you want to do what i can't if i don't see growth i'm like automatically unattracted to a person because at this time in life we're not getting any younger we don't know if we're going to take our last breath today tomorrow and you choosing to stay in the same place and um I think that hurts me. Like, if I'm seeing a friend hurt or going through stuff and they constantly complaining, but they are the reason why the stuff is happening, Mm -hmm. that has been, like, a huge reason for me um, to not or just to step back. Because, like, when my friends hurt, I hurt. Now, if you just putting me in a situation all the time, okay, you don't don't love me at this point. That's how I'm taking it. Because, you know, when you cry, I cry. And you just keep... And there's, like, I'm still trying to figure out, okay, is this grace or is this, like, okay, you actually do need to remove yourself because I don't believe in being unequally yoked either. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that was that was some good points. And in my studies, y'all, um, I definitely wanted to look up what are some common reasons for friendship breakups. And these are a few reasons. So, if this happening to you, maybe you should, like, rethink constant negative energy Mm, that's a good one that's normally what happens because it's like we're not even seeing eye to eye because you're moving different like you're not supposed to be moving like that or they're not even understanding um or willing to receive or take accountability so that is a big one for me when i leave um lack of trust uh frequent conflicts one-sided effort feeling drained, unhealthy behaviors, and lack of respect. So those are a few um, signs that you should think about um, when it comes to breaking up with a friend. Um, And those are serious signs. So if you have um, some more signs that you feel like is a thing, definitely comment underneath the video of your reasons. There's one that's not on there that I'm surprised. Ooh. Jealousy. Oh my gosh. It definitely wasn't. That's like a huge one. That's a one. huge one. I think that's a big one for me. Oh my gosh. Ooh. Do we even have time to talk about that? <laughs> I'm like, wow. That is, that's a huge one. Have you ever been in a situation like that? Or I have. And it? it like makes me really sad Um, because I think jealousy is a normal emotion. We all have things that, mm-hmm. you know, we're jealous of, but it becomes an issue when the jealousy action. 
becomes outward. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I used to have a friend who was like really um, insecure, and she would say things like, "Oh, I don't want to go out with you. You look nice." It would just kind of be weird, and I didn't really understand it at first, and mm-hmm. then. She introduced me to, like, one of her friends, and that friend was like, oh, you're actually really cool. I was like, huh? Mm-hmm. She was like, yeah, she um, she was like, she told me that um, she didn't know, like, how we were going to get along. And they were, like, into things that I wasn't necessarily into. Yeah. So sometimes, like, I feel like that energy people, like, when y'all are just on – two different paths sometimes people start calling you things she Mm -hmm. will call me bougie you know stuff like that and those were signs Mm -hmm. that I was ignoring in the beginning and then um like we were in college and then she like moved back home Mm -hmm. and we just never talked again dang that is so sad I think one of the reasons, because, um, like, all my life, for the most part, if I ever got into it with a girl, and I haven't got into it, but, like, I find out they didn't like me because um, I'm a very nice person. If I find out where it gets back to me and somebody don't like me, it's normally over either a guy or that they're just plainly jealous of me. And I never got that. Like, I guess, they're, like, jealousy is a normal emotion, but... People are some, like, haters, bro. People are really I, I, I on never, their downfall, and it oh hurts. Oh, my gosh. And I can't relate. Like, I'm still trying to understand, like, the mind and heart of a hater or a real jealous person. Because I, when I see somebody win, I clap with you. Like, it's mine. Like, I was taught that. I was raised in church. So, it's, like, it's so sad. And I tell people, even to this day, being, like, here in Columbus, Ohio, it's a smaller town. But sometimes I don't go out. Like, people really don't see me like that unless it's my own event, you Mm -hmm. know. Um, But I think sometimes I'm a little scared of success because of those jealous eyes. I say that all the time. Because the more you elevate, the more people hate on you. And people, real life, been getting killed for stuff like that. Like, that has been one of my biggest fears. Um, And then just hearing all these stories... um, about, sorry if I get her name wrong, I think she in Quila, Quila Robinson. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah, it's been a while. I always get her name wrong. Um, just kind of hearing that story, not try to dig too deep in it, because, like, it was kind of trauma informed. But, like, the fact is, like, y'all were jealous of her. And y'all beat her and left her there. That stuff makes me so sad. It scares me. Like, it scares me. So, um, I see a lot of that. So, if you're friends, uh, how, actually, how do you, how can you tell? Because I think even with that story, people were like, she shouldn't know. And it's like, no, you, sometimes you don't I think it's hard, but I think it's important to pay attention to, like, backhanded comments. Mm -hmm. You know, stuff like that. Um, when people, like, give you a side compliment, like, just always, like, critiquing you. Mm -hmm. And it's not even about, like not being able to accept constructive criticism. Sometimes people really just aim to kill. Like, they're always just coming at you, coming at you, coming at you. And then, um, I don't know. It's just kind of like a use your, mm-hmm. use your best judgment thing. But it's so disheartening when it's like, I've done nothing but love you and accept you for so who sad. you are. Mm-hmm. But you are too busy comparing yourself to me. And that's the root of it. And comparison is the thief of joy, y'all. So even if you find yourself envious or having, like, those type of feelings, one, pray about them. Two, maybe go see a therapist and see why you feel like you're constantly, like, comparing yourself because that could be rooted in something. Um, So definitely, again, no judgment because it is a normal emotion, but... Um, you don't want to act on it. You don't want to be living in depression because you're constantly comparing because you now made it a lifestyle. Like, that's your way of life, and you don't even know it. Because I've seen so many people make horrible, horrible decisions because they were jealous of another person. Or, you know, their boyfriend talked to this girl for too long, and now they... Like, it's horrible, and your life means more. Mm -hmm. it means more you're so valuable there's no 
reason to compare yourself. And that's a whole girl code rule too. So we ain't gonna get too <laughs> deep into that. But to close off the segment, um, what is the best way to move on from a friendship breakup, uh, whether even it's a relationship breakup, what would you tell that girl who's having a hard time removing herself from people who don't serve her anymore? I think it's just really important to be honest. Mm -hmm. You know, like, I really enjoyed the time that we have shared, but I don't feel like we're aligned anymore, Mm -hmm. and I think it's best we go our separate ways. Or if you don't feel like it's necessary to cut that person off completely you could say you know like we can still be friends but i don't want to i don't want to kick it as much i'm not doing these things yeah. anymore and i'm not you know shaming you for whatever it is that you do but this is where i'm at now and i don't want to do this anymore mm-hmm. and i think it was interesting just to kind of piggyback what you said in the beginning um because i'm in that space where I definitely want to be around people who look like my future, so I'm not constantly outgrowing people. Mm-hmm. It's like, like you said, it is true. And I think, when me and my mom was talking about it, just in general, I think it's comfortable being around people who are, you know, not too ambitious. We're still human, so we're not judging each other. But again, I keep outgrowing those spaces because I constantly want to grow. And that's not their path. But to be in a circle with people that look like they're doing better than you and I've been used to being the smartest in the room low key all my life there's like not a sense of inadequacy but there's a there is a feeling of like I don't belong here Mm -hmm. because this is totally out of my comfort zone and now I'm so used to being the one that's giving 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 because it's my cup that everybody for the most part um, gets to get filled and you know get poured into things like that but now, just to be getting filled, and I can't pour back because you're doing better than me. Um, I know those are the spaces that you should be in, but I would say personally, you know, like I know I'm even struggling to be in a group that really is doing better without feeling like inadequate in mm-hmm. any way. So, but you did talk about that a little bit earlier. So do you find yourself in groups like that more now? Yeah, like this year has all of been, this year for me has been all about stepping out of my comfort zone, just doing random things mm-hmm. that I want to do that make me happy without second guessing it. And it's mm-hmm. like with that, I don't ask people for their opinions or their, because I don't need anyone's approval. Mm-hmm. Like, you know, sometimes you may want to do something and you ask a friend, do you think I should do this? I'm mm-hmm. just doing it. Yeah. So just networking, just meeting new people, um, just being open and honest about who I admire, you know, Mm -hmm. who I look up to, like, oh, I want to be like this. You know, just really, I like to study people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, (laughs) So just studying people that I find intriguing. Mm -hmm. That is so good. That's some good tips. I'm going to definitely take that with me this year. (laughs) Because I'm like, this year I definitely, and I still love all of my friends. Um, Mm -hmm. But you do have to have different people for different things. So, like, knowing that I am worthy to be in those spaces, too. Exactly. And people who could pour into me without, you know, feeling like I got to do so much. Like, she never just receive. Mm -hmm. Learn to receive. Exactly. (laughs) Yes, so that is so good. So what is your favorite girl code or just something that you live by? Yeah, so my favorite girl code from the book is actually a relationship code that said, um, what you allow will continue. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's important to um, identify that in friendships. So if you're saying that you no longer want to do these things, but you're still surrounding yourself with that crowd or it's not even about changing who you are with necessarily, but changing your actions. Hey, I don't want to do this anymore. And if they don't accept that, then you can move on from them. But Mm -hmm. at least, you know, having that conversation, you can't expect anyone to read your mind. And that's in any, any relationship because friendships are relationships. Mm -hmm. Yes. That was so good. Oh my gosh. Uh, I can't even get into it. <laughs> we'll bring her back. But how can everybody follow you? Yeah, so I am on Instagram and Twitter at homegirlalt. 
and on TikTok at Audie the Advocate because that's what I like to do. Yes, period. <laughs> Thank you for coming of back. Course. And remember, guys, you can sit with us. So we will see you guys next week. And I'm definitely bringing her back. So you'll see more <laughs> of her. All right, see ya.